What's up guys, this is Ron here, and today we're looking into Void Warlock and showing you how good it is right now in Destiny 2. So let's get into the video. So first Void Warlock, they have gone under the radar quite a lot. Obviously this season they've not got any benefit team wise for the season artifact rod other than then wishing to be in. Obviously with that being final blows, it's got almost power, near to your supercharge. But that's about it. And you can do up solo weapons, but you're not gonna do that with your team. So what makes Void Warlock good and sort of like up there is a competitive sort of build to use within Warlock, as Void Warlock are still very powerful even without season artifact mods. The reason for that is Void Warlock is the easiest access to Devour, as with their aspect feeding the Void, ability, Void ability kills gets you Devour. Devour, when you get final blows, you store health and you grind from energy and you can step into Devour on the timer. This is helpful as we go into using Chaos Accelerant where we overcharge the need by holding them to make them even more powerful. So that realistically the aspect for this is to basically get killers with a void ability but whilst to get the power, get the grenade and then spam as much grenades as we can because of the chaos accelerant and the Zoic Pig's controversial hold, they do some work on enemies in general as with this combo you can theoretically do a lot of damage to higher tier enemies in any aspects of the game and you can do absolutely fine with it and the setup is fairly easy to do and it's not complex and overall this build is really fun and really enjoyable so with those two aspects and knowing that so you're off, what fragments do we use? Well, the four fragments we use for the build are the following ones. Echo Explosion, Void Builds of Battle Blows, Void Staggers to Explode. Enough said about that. Echo Instability, Repeating Tag of a Grenade, Great for Volatile Rounds. As we'll be spamming grenades, we'll be getting Volatile Rounds for Void Weapons as volatile rounds only apply to our void weapons and nothing else. Echo as Tarthasian, obviously when you pick up void breaches or all this power, you get devour. So there's other way of getting devour for this build, it's really nice. And echo weakening or echo undermining, obviously grenades become weakening. So weaken targets and they get hit. With that in mind, we used Vortex Grenade as a lingering grenade and it applies the weakening for long periods of time. So that's why we go for it. And obviously, going back to the subject with obviously Echo Instability, Vortex Rounds. Vortex Rounds are basically uh, when you shoot an enemy, you apply a debuff to them, and when they take enough damage, when you're putting Vortex Rounds on them, they basically do an explosion does additional damage to them. But Volta Realms on your void weapons, they also apply anti-barrier to them, which allows you to stun anti-barrier or barrier champions. So that's why this is really good, and with some certain so weapons that will show off, you can combine Volta Realms and weaken into the weapon. You probably know which one it is, but we're gonna go to that next. So, with the weapons of the build and what you can use for it. So, you want to focus your energy weapon sort to be a kind of primary void weapon of any type, really. As this will allow you to apply volatile rounds to the weapon. Now, with the legendary ones, you've got good options you can use. But with the Zodic ones, there's some even better options you can use. As your options like hard light, which you can change to avoid energy weapon, 
for Monarch, which is pretty good, for good dot damage, and it can do Overload, but obviously with Water Rounds, it's Anti-Barrier, so you will not be able to apply the Anti-Barrier, but having an Overload option is really nice. Graviton Lance, as it's great for Ad Clear, but it does have, obviously, Orb Weapon onto it with its Catalyst, so it's a good option for that. And then, Collective Obligations. As, like I said, co Collective Obligations is sort of trait is obviously when you damage a target that suppressed weaken or volatile it gains that and once it's fully charged you consume that charge and then your weapon applies hazard that you also you need to apply it to the target as we were doing weakening and volatile you have this weapon will allow you to have become a volatile and weakening weapon employer which is really strong to say at least and it's very good but the caveat is, it's a rare exotic, and it's a chance we get a drop. So not many people will get the weapon, at this one foul and cycle. And depends on people who run it, and get weapons to get a drop. But it is a good option if you do have it. So if you do have it, use it, and you will really enjoy this build. But, like I said, the other weapons are good options as well. As there's a lot of good void primary well, legendary weapons in the entry slot so it's good for that because then you can use your exotic into either your kinetic or power slot so you have good options overall for that <coughs> now let's go into over the exotic ammo piece and the mods for this build so what mods do we want to focus this build well, for the helmet, we want to have a Void Siphon, as we've been primarily using the Void Weapon. So when you kill weapon enemies with that, we get generated Orbs Power. Really nice overall. For your Gauntlets, this is where we get the interesting part. As we have Controversial Holds. What they do is, obviously when you resist, you can resist incoming damage while charging your Void Grenade. And you return your grenade energy on hits. So as a group of enemies, you can get a fair bit of grenade energy back with this build if you hit your targets with your grenade. But what also does help is having two grenade kickstarts and a fastball. Obviously, fastball wants to get through it further, and having two grenade kickstarts returns energy back for the amount of armor charge you have. This helps with having on your chest piece two charged up, as then you can have five ammo charges in total. So when you have a max stack of five, you gain a lot of green energy from having two quick grenade kick stacks and throwing your nade on five ammo charge. So that's a good combo for that. But getting five ammo charges is quite hard. Well, this is when we use stacks on stacks, where we gain additional charge of up. Of armor charge when you pick up an orb of power. So, where if you pick up an orb of power, you gain two instead of one, which is really nice for this build. But what we can also do is having invention. So, it does. When you pick up an orb of power, you get, obviously, your grenade cooldown juice, which is really good for this build. And having two of those allows you to have it more potent in effect. So basically, with this setup, we're gaining a lot of grenade energy back with minimum efforts. So yeah. And then we go to the class item. Now, with the class item, we can use obviously our wrist. As we're going to use a wrist, we might as well put the bomber class mod on. Three of those. As we'll gain a lot of we're in the back when we cast our class ability, aka a rift. Which is really good with that, as we get a lot more green in the back for this build. And in total, we will have a constant loop of getting grenade energy and being efficient with it as well. Now, with this, there's a caveat we need to focus on. That being 
and making sure we have 100 discipline or tier 10 discipline as this will reduce our grenade cooldown even more so with you this build you need to make sure to focus on stats particularly in discipline and it's really good for that as having max discipline would reduce your grenade cooldown significantly and what benefit having low cooldowns on your grenades so you can spam more units so make sure you have at least 100 discipline and if you look at the other stats one of my favorite is tier 10 resilience as a effect percent damage reduction is really nice or recovery so you get your risk back faster and recovery rate is increased as well so your primary one should be discipline then you're going to either of resilience or recovery or if you get triple stats do that as well but yeah that is the build and how it works like i said overall Holy Warlock are pretty good and are pretty solid for me content overall and they just get under looked at because we have more bigger builds out there that are doing really good at the moment but Holy Warlock is still really good and really strong and can do a lot really as in terms of damage output with supers, the spamminess of grenades, quite weak in with that and then certain weapons you can use for this build. Obviously you don't gain much benefit from arsenal with seasonal artifact mods, but that's another story. But overall, Void Warlock is pretty good and still good to this day. And will probably do well come the final ship. So yeah. But if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this build, please let me know on what build you do next. And if you've got any ideas, ideas for suggested to content, please let me know in the comments down below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.